Hello and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be a Photoshop tutorial where I share with you how to render out a sketch. Let's dive straight into the tutorial. Here is a quick run through of how I start setting up a sketch in Procreate. I first import an image that is similar to what I want and then I decrease the opacity and add another layer just so that I can start tracing over the image. For this example I have used the standard HB pen but I also enjoy using the inking pens for a bit of a neater look. Then all that's left to do is to trace over all the details. I want to keep everything so I'm pretty much tracing over everything apart from the lights. In order to swap out the lights all you need to do is find an image that best represents what you want them to look like and import that into Procreate. All I have to do now is trace over them. For the chairs, I want to make sure that when I duplicate them that they are in the right perspective. For that, all I do is draw some perspective lines and then I make sure that when I copy the stools that they then touch the perspective lines. And that's the sketch done. All you need to do now is export it as a PDF file. We can get started and what I quite like to do is to combine all the layers and turn it just into a base layer, like a line work layer basically. That's the file nice and clean. I'm just going to call this base layer. Then what I do is I go look for materials. I use Pinterest quite a lot and the best thing to use are seamless materials. So I have a Pinterest board with all sorts of materials. This one is quite nice and I think I'm going to be using that for a lot of the woodwork. But I want some kind of dark countertops to download that image and then I bring it in and then I'm going to label things just for housekeeping. The important thing is after you've dragged in a material into Photoshop, turn it immediately into a smart object because then it's really easy to swap that material out. So convert to smart object and then I like to transform it, edit, transform and then I like to use distort just to get it in the right place. I would actually say that looks quite good and I quite like to just keep the line work at the top. Maybe I'll actually add a colour to this as well. And then what you can do with this is you can cut some bits out and then I invert this. Right click, select inverse and then I mask it back, press on this button here. And the nice thing is if you double click on this, the material comes up. And what you can then do is, for example, add this material and you then save it, close it, and then it updates the material in this file. So this method makes it super easy to swap anything out if you just want to change the color of anything. We are going to go back and delete that. And then I'm going to bring this in again for the sides here. And then I'm just going to skew it slightly in place so that it is the right perspective. Sometimes what I like to do for my line work, I don't actually like to use the pencil tool. I will use the pen tool and then it's really easy because you can just go to your line work layer and select that area and then mask off the material. But because I have used the pencil tool in Procreate, I have to now select things manually. It does take a lot longer. so. That's just one thing to be aware of, but I wanted it to really look very sketchy. And you can see that little white spot here. So then what you do is you click on the mask on this black rectangle here, and then you select that area like so. And then you use your bucket tool, make sure to select white and then you can click on that. And essentially what this is doing is this is revealing again what was underneath, what we've hidden with the masking layer. So that is what the counter looks like. And then I'm going to try to bring in this material. But as you can see, the scale is quite big. You would probably see this a lot smaller. So for this material, a nice thing to do is to actually open that up 
in Photoshop. And then what you can do is to just expand this a little bit. This is using the new AI Generative Expand, which does look quite good. But the old way I used to do it was actually duplicate by pressing Option on a Mac and duplicating this material. And this is where a seamless material is super important because here you can see the repeat. You could now spend a lot of time fine tuning and editing this, but because this wasn't a seamless material, I am just going to use the generative expand tool, which it, it looks a lot better. So now I'm just going to mask that out again. And then what you can do is use a nice soft round brush, increase the size, use the black color, click on the mask and just fade out things a little bit. So that's these over the head cabinets done and it's starting to come to life a little bit. So I'm just going to be applying the same material to this unit here and then to all the other counters here as well. I've just finished off some of that wood texture off camera and then I have decided to go for this material for the floor and I'm just going to try out a few different tile materials for the counter just because it's quite beige so I want to bring in a little bit of colour. So I've got this green one and I'm just going to do the exact same steps, turn it into a smart object then bend it into shape. So distort and then I can actually repeat that a little bit I'm gonna just try and do the flooring if you have two materials and that just won't blend properly as you can see they they don't really blend all that well then what you can do is in your mask make sure to have a black color selected and then just select a soft brush and then you can kind of bend the two a little bit just so that there aren't any harsh edges. And now it looks a lot more blended like this. Just gonna mask the counter again. I have decided on the green tiles. I did try out some other tiles, some beige ones, and then I've tried out the red ones. I just don't like the texture that I found for it. So I do actually think for the moment, the green tiles are our best bet. And I'm going to just move on to the ceiling. And for the ceiling, I'm just gonna choose a really black, formal standard color. You could even just do that by selecting it like so, and then new layer, just choose a color, maybe something like that. Mask it and blend out the edges. Maybe something like that. I'm just going to go to the line work and I'm just going to duplicate that layer just in order to extend that line out a little bit. We're going to remove this mask and then I'm going to mask it again, maybe shorten that a little bit. And then I'm going to focus on the ceiling light here. I'm just going to choose a nice light yellow color. You can add an outer glow to this. I'm just going to lower the opacity slightly. I think I'm actually pretty happy with that. It's really starting to come together. So I've just brought this in to reference it. And then I want that to be ever so slightly lighter. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow to this because this is going to be the kick plate, just so that it looks like it's set in a little bit. I'm just going to lower the opacity a little bit. And then for the countertop, I'm going to just use this material and then I just need to sort out those blinds and maybe pick a nice wall colour for here and then it's pretty much done. And I'm just going to add shadows to all these little details here.
And then moving on to the lights, I wasn't quite sure what color to go with. So I tried out the same green that I had used before. But if you are not happy with the color and want to swap it out, then all you have to do is select the layer effects menu and go down to color overlay. And I'm just going to choose a dark black color. If you're then not happy with the color overlay, you can simply remove the effect or choose a different color. Here I'm just duplicating the layer by holding option and then dragging my mouse across. The nice thing is that because I copied and pasted the lamps, they are all the same size. So it is just a matter of copying the color that we've already done on one light and then applying it to the second light. And now for the light itself, I'm selecting the whole area that I want the light to be in and then I'm filling it with a light yellow color. Here I'm scaling up the light just so that I can soften the edges with the eraser tool. And then I'm selecting all the excess that I want to trim. Now I'm repeating the whole process for the edges of the counter. I am selecting the entire stool just so that I can go layer by layer and mask all the materials that are behind it. For that, just follow the steps mentioned at the beginning of the video. Then I'm adding shadows to the underside of the counter. I always find that shadows make the whole sketch look more realistic. I found a nice mango wood that I'm applying to all the legs of the stools. For that, I'm using the magic wand tool and I'm selecting everything. And then I'm going to select, modify, expand. And then I tend to grow my selection by one or two pixels, just so that it also includes the outlines. Otherwise, you sometimes have a little bit of white peeking through. And I chose some really basic colors for the top of the stools. I'm just adding some shadows to give the whole sketch a little bit more of a pop. And then I added a gold detail to the lamps and I added some shadows to that and then copied that over to all the other lamps. Here, I'm just finishing off the wall color and the panel above the window. For the wall, I found this really lovely texture. It's almost like a plastic material and I'm just blending the edges of that. I always love the effect that blending out the edges gives to a sketch. And then I wanted to just extend some of the lines. So what I've done is duplicated the line work layer and masked off the part that I need. Finally finished the sink and also gave it a bit of shadow. Now it's time to work on the window. I originally tried out some patterns, but I didn't like the way it looked. So I decided to go for a plain window with some lines. All you have to do is select the area that you want the window to be and select a light shade of blue. Then I'm using a nice soft brush with the hardness on zero and adding some white highlights, making sure to hold shift so that I can draw straight lines. So now for the curtains, I have found a nice linen material. I'm adding a bit of shadow to give the curtains a bit more depth. I have also neatened up the lines for the over the head counter and I'm just going to be extending the whole left side of the sketch just so that it meets the flooring and then I'm adding a highlight to the lamps and all I do for that is use a very soft brush. I've only done the highlight on the lamps but you can pretty much do it anywhere and it gives the sketch a bit more of a realistic feel. And then I thought I would quickly show that you can easily use the text tool to help you out a little bit if you want to add anything like a low Go, and you can give it some personality by using unique fonts. Here I'm adding an outer glow to the text and all you need to do for that is press effects layer, outer glow and then you can tweak the settings. And that is the finished sketch. So that was a complete walkthrough of how I tend to do my interior design sketch drawings and how I render them out in Photoshop. I hope this video was useful. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week with another video. Goodbye.